It was not the good, the bad, and the ugly. No. Uh, and we will be right back. <laughs> well, thank you for having thank me. Thank you very much, Rachel. Appreciate it. Yeah, it was a pleasure. Yeah. It was a pleasure meeting you. You could have talked on this whole segment. No, no. That's no, why we yeah, brought yeah, you yeah. here. <laughs> that's why we brought you here. <laughs> I'm just a real estate guy now. Yeah, so. Well, yeah, we used to do a lot of work with uh, Petaluma PD because they used to train with us in canines. Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. right. Now, before you leave, what's the name of the movie? Which one? The, the one, one you just said? Yeah. You know what? I don't know that one. I, I don't know. It's a, uh, from the most famous Clint Eastwood line, but the movie. Yeah. Magnum Force. I, I is no. it Magnum Force? Is that Magnum Force? It's not Magnum Force. Oh. I didn't think so. And it's not Dirty Harry. I, I, don't, is it, I don't know if it's one of the Dirty Harry series, is it? It is. It is but yeah. it wasn't either one of those. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, because when you said uh, the part where he has the, the suspect on the ground at the bank and the, the yeah. water's going off in the back and he's yeah. like, he feel like keep drinking. <laughs> I remember watching that as a kid. He goes, I, I, I got to know. I got to know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, thank you guys. Okay. Thanks right. very thank much. Thank you very much. It was great having you. Man. All right. Okay, we're going to email time. All right. Oh, the email we received for Brian was... <laughs> Have you ever purchased a property only to realize, ooh, you made a mistake? <laughs> Oops. Which is a little different than the What were the two? Remember the special trivia from last week? Name the two days in the year where no major sporting events are going on. Oh, I don't know that. Oh. One. I don't know either. <clears throat> I'm such a sports fan, I should know. That's, That's right. right. <laughs> I wonder if I can give the answer now on that. Oh, there you go. Did you get oh. this? Oh, what do we have here, Edward? Are oh, you showing off your legs again? Showing off the legs, legs. that's right. Oh, yeah, Sometimes I forget these things are on. They don't because they don't. Yeah, you don't feel that. I don't after feel a while. them. Yeah. <laughs> well, why don't you just keep them on and parade down Fourth Street? Well, you know, I tell you, I almost went to the bank with them on. <laughs> oh, that's fun. <laughs> and that, that would have been a little bit. <laughs> the guard at the door would have had a feel. Oh, day. I know. Yeah, yeah. It's a note that says, "Give me all your money." Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't work very well. <laughs> Cover. <laughs> All right, we ready? Okay, ready? We can go a little bit long if you want on this seg segment. Just we should probably go short because I've got to be out of here in like right, never mind. Oh, yeah, okay. eight minutes or so. Or okay, nine minutes. Okay. All right, here Give we go. Give you more time. Okay. Welcome back to the Best of Investing. I'm Edward Brown, your host, along with Mark Hunt and Brian Burke, and we asked this second trivia question: What was the name of the movie in which Clint Eastwood says, "Go ahead." Make my day, gentlemen. Well, I thought it was Magnum Force. It's not. I it's thought it was some Dirty Harry movie. It is, but it's not Dirty Harry though. Ah, the original. See? It is Sudden Impact. Oh, oh, that's, oh. Yeah, that's right. Okay, Brian. We received an email for you that says, "Have you ever purchased a property only to realize you made a mistake?" <laughs> <laughs> Oops. And what was the outcome? Well, that's probably a good question, and since uh, I should probably describe what I do to so that makes that sense. Help. Is that uh, help. yeah, our company is Praxis Capital, and uh, we purchase uh, all different types of real estate that's in distress, both single-family and multifamily properties. But one of the methods that we use to purchase some of the properties is at foreclosure auctions, and of course, when you purchase at a foreclosure auction, you're buying real estate essentially sight unseen. You don't get to go inside the house. You don't get any disclosures. So it's a, it's a pretty risky method of, uh, of buying property. So it would be very easy for most people to uh, purchase property and make a mistake and go whoops after the fact. Uh, I, haven't, uh, I haven't had any major uh, whoopses in uh, over 400 properties that we've bought at, at auctions over the last uh, 17 or 20 years. Is there uh, a worry, worst case uh, scenario? Just tear isn't the house one down. of the more common ones yeah, where they buy a second and don't know it? Yeah, that is one of the more common ones is that people make a mistake on the title. Not so much that they go, whoops, I shouldn't have bought this house, but right. it might be more of, whoops, I thought I bought the house next door, but it turned out to be, <laughs> you know, they got the address wrong. Yeah. Or, oops, I bought it and I didn't realize there were all these taxes. T uh, tax liens, uh, property taxes, a first mortgage, and they just bought it on a second mortgage and now they have to pay the first off. I've seen that happen a couple times where you know, you got let's say a two hundred thousand dollar house, and somebody buys it for fifty thousand, and says, "I knew it. They told me on late night TV I could do this, and I just did it. And I just bought this two hundred thousand dollar house for fifty grand, and they don't realize, oh, it has a two hundred thousand dollar first. I really paid two fifty for the two hundred thousand dollar house. So 
that's the type of thing we see usually as it whoops. But, uh, but, but how, do you, how do you protect yourself against well, it? Do you get title well, insurance? Oh, you well, you can't report, get title right? insurance. So what you know, title what report, we I mean. do is uh, we research our own title and we research it by hand. So we go through county records on every property and we look at the condition of the title and we make notes on the condition of the title. And we go into a drive-by inspection of the house and we compare the assessor's parcel map with, uh, with what we're seeing when we're on the ground. So, you know, we do a variety of things to try to confirm and, and dig up information and, and that's the nature of this business. Uh, a lot of people don't understand that. They think that buying properties at a foreclosure auction is similar to buying properties from a real estate broker where you get disclosures and you get title insurance and you get an escrow company and when you're buying at auctions you get none of that. Essentially you turn over a cashier's check for the amount of your purchase and you now own the title to that house in the state that the lender had it and that's all you've got. And you, you have to pay all cash for 100%. 100% yeah, of it, can, yeah. yeah. It's they not like you can give 10% years. now and come yeah. back later well, and say there is. Hawaii, or they used to do that. You, uh, did you ever find out, though, that, um, like, does anyone ever come up to you after the fact and go, hey, I had an unrecorded deed? You had that yet? I haven't had that one. That's <laughs> unrecorded deed. Uh, <laughs> what we have had is we've had, uh, oh, you know, uh, that's my house, and uh, I, uh, I, I have a list pendants on it because I'm suing the lender. We've heard that before. Um, we've heard... Yeah, uh, but if it's not recorded, then... If it's not recorded, it's not a matter of record on the title. So, you know, we, we hear a lot of different stories, and a lot of times they're false. You know, sometimes you'll see uh, owners show up at the foreclosure auction and claim that they've uh, slandered the title in one way or another, or recorded this document or that document, but uh, usually it's just a story to try to get nobody to bid. But the thing is, if, if nobody bids at the auction, the lender will bid and the lender will own it. And, you know, it, it's my personal opinion. If I were a homeowner, I'd rather have me as a buyer on the other end than the bank as a buyer because they're... Yeah, trying to deal with the bank. Yeah, now you're, now well, you're they, dealing they credit with the bank. Bid. The, the, that's what happens. The yeah. lender credit bids. The lender will credit bid and then they'll own the house. And now you've got to deal with the bank even more. And you know how, how fun that was. It, you know, if you're a borrower and you've just gone through two years of hassling with your bank to attempt to get a loan modification that never went through, you know how frustrating it is to deal with lenders. And if the lender owns the property after the auction, they're not going to get any easier to deal with. Well, that, I think that's maybe the psychology that goes on with the borrower, the, the, the owner of the house is, well, see, the, I'm going to show the lender it's not worth that much, and then they'll cut me a deal. Right. 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 Yeah, it just doesn't work that way. And, and you mentioned something that was interesting, Brian, that you, you research title by hand. So do you guys like have your own in-house title facility? Is that... Uh... Essentially, yeah, we do. We have, um, we have access to, uh, to public records and recorded documents. So, you know, it used to be back in the day, I used to spend a lot of time sitting in the recorder's office, which is kind of like a library. And, you know, back then everything was on microfilm. So every document you wanted to look at, you had to right. put a cartridge in a machine and fast oh, forward it to the document oh, yeah. that you wanted sure. to see, you know and then rewind it and put it back and then go find the next one. Now it's instant. You can just click on it on their computers and it comes up on the screen. But uh, you know, now uh, we've gotten advanced enough where, where we don't actually have to go sit in the recorder's office all day anymore. Well, before microfilm, well, I guess it was all on paper. It right? was, yeah, and in books. And you'd have to, yeah. you'd have to look at every page in the page book and number, scan, yeah. the, scan the pages for names. You couldn't even do any type of search at all. And even the indexes, it, when I started this you know, 20 years ago, the indexes were on microfiche. So if you wanted to look up Mart Honf, you had to pull the H out of the microfiche for yeah. each six month period that you wanted and put it in and search the name and that's oh where you even gosh. got your list. It was a nightmare. I mean, now it's certainly gotten much easier. Well, okay. Uh, Tell you what, Brian, you're going to have to leave us pretty soon. So we're going to have a short commercial break here. All right. On our third and final trivia question. Oh, by the way, how do people get a hold of you first? Uh, best way is to uh, go to our website, which is www.praxcap.com, which is P-R-A-X-C-A-P.com, or you can go to uh, thebestofinvesting.com, and there's a link to our, uh, our website there. Okay. In the third and final trivia question, in what movie does Jimmy Stewart say, just remember this, Mr. Potter. Is it too much to have them work and pay and live and die in a decent room and bath? You like that? <laughs> okay, nicely done. Not bad. Okay, the first three callers with the correct answer win a free three-day, two-night stay at the Lighthouse Resort. Their website is lighthouseforfun.com. Call 888-912-1190. That's 888-912-1190. To answer this question, I'm going to try this one again. Don't, don't you just picture Edward sitting there watching movies all day long, pulling trying to figure out like, which one to do? Question. Sure. Well, I was going to do cartoons. I already did that before. <laughs> In what movie does Jimmy Stewart say, "Just remember this, Mr. Potter. Is it too much to have them work and pay and live and die in a couple of decent rooms in a bath?" 
Yeah, that's not bad, actually. Not bad. Okay. <laughs> what, uh, make sure to include your name and your email address, and make sure to speak slowly and please spell out each letter of your email. Uh, information for us, and we will be right back. All right. Thanks, guys. Sorry I had to Thank bug you. out today That's early. Okay. It's kind of a bummer, but... <coughs> Is this rip, boss? Rolling, roll it, roll it, right, roll it. Okay, here we go, boss. Welcome back to the Best of Investing. I'm Edward Brown, your haunt, your, your, your host. Easy for you to say. Yeah, that's right. I'm here with uh, Mark Haunt. Brian had to leave us today, uh, or a little early. And here is the third and final trivia question. In what movie does Jimmy Stewart say, Just remember this, Mr. Potter. Is it too much to have them work and play, pay and live and die in a decent couple of decent rooms and a bath? What's the name of the movie? The only Jimmy Stewart movie I know is It's a Wonderful Life. It's a Wonderful Life. That is oh, correct. I got it. guessed it right. Very good. Okay, now, we, last week we had a very special trivia contest. Indeed. And the question was, name the... Well, here, let me give yeah, you first the, the prize. First, the prize. First of all, the prize was the Vichy Springs. Yes. And it's the best of two worlds. A country inn and a hot springs resort with 26 rooms and cottages that include their world-famous naturally warm and carbonated mineral baths. Ah, sounds good. I want to go there this week. I do. Hot soaking pool, Olympic-sized swimming pool, and 700-acre private reserve for walking and exploring. Breakfast is included, and uh, as are all resort activities. And Vichy Springs is just two hours north of San Francisco and one hour north of Santa Rosa in the North Coast wine country. And here was the special trivia question. Name the two days in the year where no major sporting events are going on. Answer? I don't know the answer to that one. The day before and the day after the baseball all-star game. Are you kidding me? No, well, it's not basketball season, and football season hasn't started yet. And curling, we don't count. So, <laughs> And our winner was James from San Carlos. Congratulations. All right, James, way yeah. to go. Way to go. Enjoy that uh, time at the Vichy Springs. Okay, now, Mark, we received an email for you. Here's the question, and this is obviously coming from a borrower. Mm -hmm. How do I know if you give me a commitment that you will actually fund the loan? Uh, <laughs> indeed. So um, anyway, I, I'm uh, the broker for a company called Pacific Private Money Loans, and we're based in Marin County, and we're basically a hard money lender, and uh, or private money lender, as we oftentimes call it in uh, this new PC era we're in. And um, Private money lenders, hard money lenders, essentially these days are making loans to real estate investors, people who are trying to buy fix and flip real estate or maybe buying rental property. Uh, the banks, for the most part, uh, have really, since the um, whole subprime you know, meltdown fiasco, have really pulled out of the real estate investment uh, lending market, uh, particularly for uh, single family residences or, or you know, one through four, you know, duplex, triplexes. And uh, if you're a real estate investor out there, you know, that's probably the market you're looking at in the Bay Area is, you know, how can I buy some bank-owned property, maybe fix it and flip it for a profit, or maybe I like the fact that rents are really super strong right now, and so I want to buy some rental property because, uh, you know, real estate in the long run is always a great investment. I mean, you get depreciation, you get... Uh, you get to write off your your interest, and ultimately there's going to be appreciation again. Well, you know, one of these days, right? Eventually, sure. You know, eventually. So, so the question is, is you know, and I get this from borrowers all the time, is you know, can you make me a funding commitment? And and here's the interesting thing about um, the private money and hard money lending industry today. Um, it used to be um, years ago that m uh, many uh, hard money lenders uh, used you know used a, a mortgage fund from which to lend from. So uh, and what that meant, if you had a, have access to a fund and someone uh, calls you for a loan, it's really easy for you to make a commitment right away. It's, or at least as soon as you've reviewed the borrower's um, application, you can pretty much make a commitment. Well, um, funds have largely fallen out of favor uh, among investors, not real estate investors, but the private money investors, the people who are putting their money up uh, for to make those loans. Oftentimes, they've uh, they don't like investing in funds these days because a lot of funds um, lost money, and in fact, there are some non-performing funds still right now in existence where people have their money kind of frozen; they can't get to it. And the reason for that is because they made loans, and the real estate market bubble popped, and so now those, uh, like many other real estate, those loans are upside down. So. So nowadays, I would say most 
private lenders like Pacific Private Money use individual uh, uh, lenders to fund their loans. And so um, it makes it a little bit challenging because I really, it's, it's not our money that we're lending out, it's investor money. So we become nowadays uh, a matchmaker. Um, and by that I mean uh, we market for uh, loan applications, uh, largely from experienced real estate investors. And then we match those up with um, our stable of private lenders. And right now we've got gosh, close to 300 uh, private lenders. Well, I've grown quite a bit. <clears throat> yeah, I, I won't call it a pool of lenders because, again, it's, I don't want to confuse it with a mortgage pool. Yeah. But uh, we've got about, uh, you know, well, actually, including the people on our newsletter distributions, we've got over 300. And at any given time, there's always going to be someone who's liquid and looking. That's kind of what we refer yeah. to that as someone who's, <clears throat> excuse me, who, who likes to invest in trusted secured notes, uh, which is what we call uh, the funding side of the equation. Um, and, uh, and for that, they get great interest rates uh, uh, on their savings, 8 to 10% uh, on average. Um, so, you know, our track record is as good as our ability to basically say, we, lo we want to do the loan and, um, you know, give us 24, 48 hours to get a funding commitment. So, generally speaking, it just takes us a couple of days once we've got the loan application in to, to get those funding commitments. But uh, um, but it's still, it's not, it's not a promise. It's not like we're not a bank, so we can't go to the federal funds window and you know start the printing presses up. So we, it is a, it is a best efforts um, situation. Well, but has there ever been a time when you given a commitment that you weren't able to fund? You know, I, I'd be lying if I said no. You know, okay. because we do a lot of loans. We're, 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 we're on an annualized basis right now doing 200 loans a year. We've been doing it now for we're our fourth year. So, uh, you know, I can't say we've never left someone at the altar, but it, it's, I will say it hasn't been our fault. And it's generally, it, it, the one